Hello, Max. What you doing? Getting ready for homecoming. Got my pennant, got my button on my shirt, the whole deal. That's great. I always enjoy my homecoming. All my old school friends get together for the parade and the football game. It's so much fun. But I didn't know you went to school. Actually, I didn't. Us puppets called the factory where we were made Puppet University. Sounds more prestigious. So, do you think you'll recognize everybody? Sure, we all look the same, except for a few guys that have been through the washer too many times. So, would you say they're washed up? Ah, that's terrible. <laughs> you know, puppets get no respect. Sorry, Max, I couldn't resist. Do you have a football game for homecoming? No, but we do cheer. P U P U P U. Well, if there's no game, what do you cheer for? It's not actually a cheer. The factory was next to a fish market. It smelled so bad we'd hold our noses and shout, P U P U P U. Well, today's story is about a homecoming. It's really different than your homecoming or mine, but there's still a celebration at the end, and you can be a part of it no matter where you went to school, or even if you never went to school. Stories of the Bible, the prodigal son. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. Jesus taught everyone about God's love. All kinds of people would come to hear Jesus speak, including tax collectors and people who made bad choices. This made the Pharisees and Jewish leaders mad. Ah, yuck. They didn't think that Jesus should be around these kind of people. So Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, um, excuse me? I want my share of your estate now, before you die. Okay. So his father agreed and gave his son his inheritance. A woohoo! A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings. See ya! And moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. Huh? About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land. Aw, oh, man. And he began to starve. Hey, you! He convinced a local farmer to hire him. Thank you. And the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the food he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. Finally, he said to himself, at home even the servants have food enough to spare, and here I'm dying of hunger. I know. I will go home to my father and apologize and ask him to take me on as a servant. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son. Sir! His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and now has returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Right, yeah! Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. Huh? Hey, you! And he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. Woohoo! All right, party! 
time. All right, yahoo! The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him. Oh, oh man! But he replied, all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after wasting your money, you celebrate by giving him a great feast. His father said to him, Look, dear son, you have always stayed by me and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day. For your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. Let me get this straight. This guy had a homecoming, but he was the only one coming home. Doesn't sound like a big deal to me. Actually, the story is not just about one person. So who's it about? The son in Jesus' story represents anybody who's ever strayed away from God. Is that a lot of people? Well, except for Jesus, every person has strayed away. So the prodigal son would represent everybody who's ever lived. Now that's a lot of people. But the number isn't as important as the value that God places on every one of us. Personally, I retailed for $69.95, but some of my classmates ended up at Big Lots for $29.95. <laughs> so what's the going price for people? Well, to God, people are priceless. Not just some people, but everybody. Priceless, huh? Just like that ad on TV. Well, sort of. God created people and wants them to come back to Him, no matter how long or how far away they've strayed. And whenever somebody returns to God, there's a huge homecoming celebration in heaven. One question. How come Big Brother didn't join in the party? That's a good question, and the answer is kind of sad. The older brother didn't realize that he needed forgiveness too. You might say he thought he was in a completely different class than his brother. So he cheated himself out of a good party, huh? Definitely. So if you've come home to God, you should celebrate every person who turns their life over to Jesus. And if you haven't decided to follow Jesus, today is a great time to think about doing it. Remember, the Bible says that someday Jesus will return and that will be the greatest homecoming ever. And Jesus doesn't want anyone to miss that celebration.